This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 14 from Module 3, Solving Inequalities. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students solve word problems leading to inequalities that compare P times X plus Q and R, where P, Q, and R are specific rational numbers. Students interpret the solution in the context of the problem. The essential questions for this lesson are how do you solve an inequality and when do you reverse an inequality symbol? The opening exercise. The annual county car carnival is being held this summer and will last five and a half days. Use the information and the other given information to answer each problem. You are the owner of the biggest and newest roller coaster called the Gentle Giant. The roller coaster costs $6 to ride. The operator of the ride must pay $200 per pay for the ride rental and $65 per day for a safety inspection. You want to make a profit of at least $1,000 a day. What is the minimum number of people that must ride the roller coaster? Write an inequality that can be used to find the minimum number of people, P, that must ride the roller coaster each day to make a daily profit. Recall when you're talking about profit that it is revenue minus expenses equals profit. The revenue is the income, and the income is coming from the rides, and that's $6 per ride. So 6 times the number of people riding is the revenue. The expenses is made up of two different things, and you will have to pay $200 plus $65 every day for the rental and the safety inspection. And then you want your profit to be at least $1,000, so it could be more than that. At least means it could be greater than or equal to $1,000. So there's our inequality. Let's go ahead and simplify that, combining our expenses. So 6P minus $265 is greater than or equal to $1,000. That is our inequality that can be used to find the minimum number of people that must ride the roller coaster each day to make the desired daily profit. Next it says to solve the inequality. To solve an inequality means to write it in the form of x is greater than the amount or x is less than the amount. Well here we're not using x, we're using the variable p. So let's go ahead and solve that inequality. First undoing subtraction with addition. So we're going to add $265, and remember to do the same operation with the same number on both sides of the inequality. The symbol is preserved when you are adding and subtracting. So bring down the 6P greater than or equal to $1,265. So now we have multiplication. You can either divide by 6 on both sides of the inequality, or you can multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal, 1 sixth. Remember to perform the same operation with the same number on both sides of the inequality. The inequality symbol is preserved because I am multiplying with a positive number. A sixth of 6 is 1, and 1 times p is p. And 1265 times 1 sixth is equal to 210 and 5 sixths. So if you divided by 6, you would end up with a repeating decimal. Remember to write repeating decimals as fractions, unless you are referring to money, in which you would round to the nearest penny. Next, we want to interpret the solution. So when you interpret the solution, you want to know, is the solution the answer, or do I need to tweak it or adjust it? In this case, P stands for the number of people, and the number of people has to be a whole number. You can't say that there are 210 and 5 sixth people. So then you think, well, should I use 210 or should I use 211? If you rounded this, you would get 211. But that still may not be correct. So looking at the sign greater than or equal to, is 210 greater than or equal to 210 and 5 sixths? No, it is not. Is 211 greater than or equal to 210 and 5 sixths? 
yes, it is. So the answer, when you interpret the answer here, uh, the minimum number of people is 211 people. Is the minimum of num number of people in order to make a profit of at least $1,000. In the next problem, a youth summer camp has budgeted $2,000 for campers to attend the carnival. The cost for each camper is $17.95. Let's highlight information. The cost for each camper is $17.95. It includes general admission and two meals. The youth summer camp must also pay $250 for the chaperones to attend and $350 for transportation to and from the carnival. So they have budgeted $2,000 to pay for the $17.95 per camper plus the $250 plus the $350. The budgeted $2,000 means that it can be up to $2,000. It could be equal to $2,000, but it cannot be more than $2,000. If it's more than $2,000, they can't take that many kids. So the cost of the trip must be less than or equal to the budget. What is the greatest number of campers who can attend the carnival if the camp must stay within its budgeted amount? The cost of the trip is made up of the campers plus the chaperones plus the transportation. And the chaperones and the transportations are fixed costs. So the chaperones are $250, the transportation is $350, and then the campers are $17.95, and we're going to let C equal the cost of a camper. So $17.95 times C, and all of that has to be less than or equal to $2,000. Combine the fixed cost, that gives us $600. Bring down the $17.95 per camper. Then, if you take away the fixed costs of $600, that's going to leave you the amount that is for each camper. So, 17.95C is less than or equal to $1,400. Then, our Inequality symbol has been preserved so far because we just subtracted and you do not reverse it when you add or subtract. Next, we could either divide by 17.95 on both sides of the inequality or we could multiply by the reciprocal, which is 1 over 17.95. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal on both sides of the inequality. The inequality is preserved since we are multiplying by a positive number. A number times its reciprocal is 1, and 1 times C is C. 1400 times 1 over 17.95 is 77.99444. So now we need to interpret our answer. The greatest number of campers, let's keep that covered for a moment, is either going to be 77 campers or 78 campers or 76 campers. So let's see. It's got to be less than or equal to this amount. And a camper is a whole number. So it's either going to be 76, 77, or 78. 77 is less than or equal to this entire number, so it could be this number. 76 is also equal to that or less than that number. 78 is more than that number, so it's not going to be 78, even though we would round it to 78. So the answer is either 76 or 77. And it says the greatest number of campers. So if 77 will work and it's greater than 76, so 77 is the greatest number of campers that we could bring and still stay under budget. And you think, well, why isn't it 78? If you round to 78 campers, you would exceed the $2,000 budget. So right here, if you substituted for this C, 
If you substituted 78 and did the math, you would come out to more than $2,000. Interpreting the answer is an important part about solving inequalities. Next, example two. The carnival owner pays the owner of an exotic animal exhibit 650 for the entire time the exhibit is displayed. The owner of the exhibit has no other expenses except for a daily insurance cost. The owner of the animal exhibit wants to make more than a $500 in profits for the five and a half days. What is the greatest daily insurance rate he can afford to pay? Let I equal the daily insurance rate. Remember that income minus expenses equals profit. And the ex income in this case is the $650 for the um, income, $650. Take away the expenses. So the expenses are five and a half days times the daily insurance cost. Five and a half days times the daily insurance cost. <laughs> so here, five and a half days times the daily insurance cost would be 5.5i. And we take away that from the income and that gives us our profit. We want our profit to be more than $500. So greater than $500. So that's our inequality to solve. Let's go ahead and rewrite the subtraction as adding the opposite, negative 5.5i. Bring down the 650, greater than $500. Undo this $650 by subtracting it. and simplify. Now I've got negative 5.5i greater than negative $150. Notice that the inequality was preserved. We were just subtracting. Then the next thing, I can either divide by negative 5.5 or I could multiply by the reciprocal, negative 1 over 5.5. So um, I'm going to go ahead and divide this time. Divide by negative 5.5, divide by negative 5.5. When you divide by a negative number, the symbol is reversed. So I'm going to change that to less than. Then a number divided by itself is 1. 1 times i is i. Negative 150 divided by negative 5.5 is 27.27 .27 repeating. I, the daily insurance rate, must be less than that number. So the maximum daily insurance is 27.27. .27. You can check it using the original inequality and substitute I for 2727. .27. That gives you 500.015, which is greater than $500, so it is true. So the answer to the question is $27.27. .27. Let's highlight that answer. Maximum daily insurance rate is 27.27. In example three, several vendors at the carnival sell products and advertise their business. Shane works for a recreational company that sells ATVs, dirt bikes, snowmobiles, and motorcycles. His boss paid him $500 for working all of the days at the carnival, plus 5% commission on all of the sales made at the carnival. What was the minimum amount of sales Shale needed to make if to earn more than $1,500? We'll let S equal the amount of sales. And recall from module two that commission is a percent of sales. So I'd like you to pause the video and write an inequality and then check it before you solve. So the money earned has to be greater than $1,500. That's the commission plus $500 must be less than $1,500. The commission is 5% of sales. 5% is 
of sales means to multiply it by s. So that's your inequality. Now again, pause the video and solve the inequality. So you're going to subtract 500 from both sides, then divide by 0.05 on both sides of the inequality. A number divided by itself is 1. And the sales must be $20,000. So the sales must be greater than $20,000 to make a profit of more than $1,500. In this lesson, you have learned to solve an inequality using the same steps in the same order in which you solve an equation. First, simplify using PEMDASO. Second, Solve by undoing addition or subtraction using the inverse operation. Third, undo multiplication or division using the inverse operation. Last, interpret the answer.